and good afternoon everybody and welcome to the special Saturday afternoon Nat Geo Kids show coming for you from the western fringes of the Great Kruger National Park. My name is James Hendry. I've got my very special kids safari shorts on. I'm sure you can see that they are very wonderful. And while we're looking for leopards and wild dogs and elephants and impalas and all sorts of other interesting things, please remember to ask your parents to send us your questions to the email address natgeokids at wildearth.tv. That's natgeokids at wildearth.tv. We'd love to have as many questions as you can send us on this lovely Saturday afternoon. It is quite blustery over here, that means it's blowing quite hard, and it is August, and in this part of the world we expect to have winds in August, and we call them the August winds. Now we're not the only ones out here of course, we are also live from the Masai Mara in Kenya, which is a thousand five hundred miles away from where we are now. We are looking for a leopard called Hosanna, who's a young male leopard, and he was seen around here this morning, so we might be very lucky to see him. Who knows? Just turning down my radio. All the way in the Masai Mara, my friend Taylor has already managed to find something which I think you will enjoy very, very much. Hello everybody, sorry it seems as though we're obviously having some technical difficulties out here but that is a very big elephant and we'll go and have a look at them again in just a minute. My name is Taylor McCurdy and I'm so happy to have you all on the safari and on camera showed you that amazing elephant is Archie. How cool is that? Now unfortunately we can't do too much driving around in this car because it's not like the other safari vehicles that you'll see. Uh, it, we are in a different, you can see I was sort of standing up, but look at that, there's a little baby elephant, now look at its, look what it's doing with its trunk and its head, see how it's lifting its head up, opening its ears, that's a naughty little elephant that one, I think it's all those warthogs that were there, but they've run off, and then it got a little bit cheeky, and I think it wants to go into the mud, now the coolest thing about elephants is that they don't have to put sunscreen on like we have to on the hot days, they just have to use mud, so it's free, I suppose if you wanted to roll around in the mud too, you could do that and it would work just as well. What have you got in there, little elephant? There might even be a little bird or something that it's trying to chase. And it's only a couple of months old and probably thinks it is big and strong and as, as tall as mum. But it isn't really. It's still got a lot of growing to do. So that's just a very small herd of elephants, just the three of them, mum and her two babies. And I reckon... There might be some more elephants around. Maybe they're ahead of her and already got into the forest. Maybe they're heading towards the Mara River to have a drink of water. Who knows what they're going to be doing down that side. But we can't see the rest of them. But I have no doubt that we're going to see lots and lots of elephants today because it is so, so hot. So we will try and find some that are maybe having a little bit of a mud wallow. That is going to be the best. But we're in Kenya. How cool is that? So completely different to South Africa, another country, a little bit further northeast of South Africa. And we're in an area called the Mara Triangle. And there are so many animals. But what we will have to do is that just now we're going to drive all the way down and maybe see if we can find some things along the river. We're also going to be looking for lions. But that's it for the moment. It's, um, it's very, very, very quiet around here other than just those elephants. Megan, are you still around? just checking because it seems as though I'm having some issues with my radio so there's someone else that you all need to meet and he's also driving around in Kenya and his name is David hello not your kids boys and girls and welcome to me it's my turn now and from the elephants now I'm showing you something little smaller but something interesting and what you see there on your screen, that one moving, I want you to see this small baby which can compare to your kids. And I guess that is a mother and a baby. And we call this wild beast. We call this wild beast. Just see there how they're posing. 
you know, the tall grass around them. And if you keep quiet for a few seconds, you might hear them going, eh, eh, eh. Let me see whether you can hear anything. It is something similar to like the cows, how they communicate. But let me first introduce myself and say, well, my name is David. How are you all today? Jambo Jambo from Kenya in the Mara Triangle. And filming with me today is James. Hello, James. How is James doing? I'm fine. We're very excited for all of you kids to see all this beauty of the wildebeest or the wildebeest. And today we are seeing them in their hundreds. We only have one request to make to you as we go back to the wildebeest. We will request you to ask us as many questions as you can through your parents and tell them to ask us what you want to know. And you can do or they can send their questions to notyourkids at wildearth.tv. And that way, you'll be able to understand. Sorry, there's a vehicle moving in the distance there. You'll be able to understand why these animals move together in, not in the hundreds, but in the thousands. Look at them. Is anybody counting? As James is panning them? Let's all count together. I don't know what formula we're going to use to count them. Maybe the integral formula. But I can tell you, we got thousands of them surrounding us. And this tall grass you see here, in a few weeks' time, it will all be mowed down. Either they'll be, you know, lying on it, walking through it, because it looks quite dry, and what they're eating is the grass that's much shorter, which is much nutritious. But the tall, dry grass, the stalks you see there, they're not interested in them because they do not have any nutrition value. Now, as you know, boys and girls are different. This wildebeest here, are the same. You get males and females having horns. Sorry, there's another car of people just like us enjoying this beauty of the wilderness here. And when you see them moving in their thousands like this, we call this migration. They do migrate from one national park in a country called Tanzania. And that national park is called Serengeti National Park and they come to another game reserve in Kenya, which you all know is called the Mara Triangle. This migration goes round all around the year, and they do not stop. And mainly they migrate for two reasons. Number one, for food, which they need once they eat all the grass that is shot in Tanzania, in Serengeti National Park. They will need to come here and get all this tall grass, all this grass you see here. And the second reason why they migrate, they always give birth in Serengeti and in another area called Ngorongoro in Tanzania. So to the right of that, you see the one just stood up. That's a youngster there, maybe your age. The mother just goes down and she does not want to stay very far from the mother. And I'm sure all you kids, you'll always stay close to your parents to be safe, isn't it? Remember, as I said earlier, if you have any comments or any questions, don't be shy. Let us know what you'd like to know through your parents. Tell your parents to send questions to natgeokids at waldath.tv. Migration is not only wildebeest, but also we got zebras. I'm sure James is going to locate some zebras that always move together with them. So it consists of wildebeest, zebras, sometimes small antelopes called the Thompson gazelles. Now, my other friend got something bigger than this wildebeest you see here. I have got something very much bigger than the wildebeest here, the elephant. You can see they are very much stationary feeding. Look at that animal, majestic, good looking. Look at those ears. Now, this is one of the animals that prefers to feed on very clean, clean, clean food. Look, he's grabbing the grasses there now, and he will shake the grasses a little bit. Look, 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 see, so that he cannot eat the soil. So these animals, they are very much lovely. So now they are meeting, you can see, they are just now getting some food altogether. 
a very very good afternoon and a warm welcome to the beginning of my game drive i am sydney and i'm not traveling alone this afternoon i am traveling with my camera operator senzo and i have got one interesting question for you the keys who can tell me which is the largest land mammal the largest land mammal so don't forget kids you can ask your parents to ask us questions on natgeo kids at wildearth.tv so these elephants are very much stationary feeding and it's very much windy here where i am at least now it's cool a little bit there's a lot of wind coming from west towards the eastern direction of the game reserve so these elephants, they spend much of their time feeding. They can feed up to 18 to 20 hours. That is a lot of time. Instead of resting, they just keep eating, keep eating. Because these elephants, what they're eating now, grass. Grass is, is not that very rich in terms of the nutrients. Look at that. Let's see what they're thinking about to do now. So they're not bothered by anything. Let's see, the little one is trying to sniff some rocks there. Not too sure what is it that she's looking for, that, that side. This trunk, they use the trunk as well in order to pick up the scent. Maybe she was trying to get hold of who was there before these elephants. Because some of the animals, they always leave behind their smell. Now he's hiding a little bit, whereas the other one is now going under the shade. The sun is very hot at the moment. So these animals can be able to eat up to 400 kilograms a day. So you can see the temperature is not that very different from the temperature in Mara at the moment. Both these two areas are very much hot this afternoon. So these elephants are coming from the, the dry riverbed. You can see where that elephant is facing. So that is where they prefer, because when it's raining, the dry riverbeds, they collect a lot of water when it's raining. And there is the only place which still has got some of the green trees. So elephants, they are here attracted by this kind of green trees so that they can have a very nutritious diet. can see that the tusks they look very much dirty unfortunately the elephants they don't clean their tusks so they normally use that trunk in order to pick some of the things from the eyes whenever there's something going into the eyes and they use that trunk again to collect some of the water when they're drinking and they use it again in order to debug the tree after the tusk has opened the bark from the trees Some of these elephants, they lose these tusks when they are pushing each other. Uh, Teresa, these elephants I have got here, I am not too sure in terms of their age, but I can estimate that the one we are seeing now might be older than 15 years. Maybe it's roughly between 15 to 20 years. The elephants can survive up to 65 years and that is quite a lot of time eh? so the their lifespan is more or less the same as our lifespan it's quite very much windy at the moment here but the elephants are not worried So these elephants are not worried at all. So now let's see, in Mara, Taylor, one of my colleagues, she has got one of the very beautiful bears in order to show you this afternoon. And you see that bird standing in, in the shade. Now it's not in the shade of a tree. There's actually a buffalo, an African buffalo standing there. That's quite clever. Now not only is that bird keeping nice and cool, that bird's called a hummercorp, but it's also trying to get any frogs 
or any really big insects that maybe are disturbed out of the grass by those buffaloes, which is quite clever. But normally these birds are in the water and what those buffalo were doing, they were actually wallowing in the mud, just like I was telling you that the elephants do to keep themselves nice and cool and also helps as a sunscreen. It's the same thing for the buffalo. They do the same thing. Look, how, look at them. They're caked in mud. And then those birds, they like to live in the water too. So they all work together out here. So I'll tell you something quite cool. I think it's quite cool. We call these buffalo, these are boy buffalo. We call them dugger boys. And what dugger boy means, dugger means mud. And then, of course, a boy because they're male buffalo. So they are buffalo bulls that like to lay around in the mud, the dugger boys. And you can see he's covered his horns with a two. And they're quite big. And they're very, very nervous. They're always looking around. They're always looking over their shoulder. And that's because there could be lions around. And actually, there was a pride of lions around here today somewhere. That's what we're looking for. So they need to be careful because lions like to eat the buffalo. And they normally live in big herds. So it must be quite scary for them to be out here on their own. But when they get too old and too slow to keep up with the big breeding herds, so that's where all the females and the babies are, but there are also lots of boys there too, then they will then they will sort of form smaller groups. And they're not chewing bubble gum either. As you can see, they're chewing with their mouth open. So buffalo are like cows. And maybe you've learned at school about ruminants, animals with four chambered stomachs. So it's a really effective way of getting all the nutrients, all the vitamins and things out of the grass. Sometimes buffalo will eat leaves too. So that's what you're seeing them doing now. They've regurgitated, so they've pushed up some undigested grass or partially digested grass. They haven't completely digested it just yet. And now they're chewing it again and then they'll swallow it. So they don't have to eat all the time. A very important part of getting all the nutrients out of the grass is actually this process, which we call, it's a big word, rumination. And I think you probably would have started learning about this maybe in biology. <laughs> it's always funny. And I wonder if the buffalo in Africa, you know how they say with the water? What is it when they say that the water turns clockwise or anti-clockwise? I wonder if that's the same <laughs> you know, with the buffalo and the way that they chew, who knows? I've never seen an American bison before, so I wouldn't be able to tell you. They don't have very big teeth though, but they don't need to have big sharp teeth like a lion or a leopard. They've just got to have some nice molars at the back to help grind that grass down. So you know if you stick your finger in your mouth, right to the back of your mouth, those teeth. Those are the teeth that the buffalo want. They'll use the front ones to crop the grass or to bite off of the grass, and then they'll push the grass to the back and they'll chew it. And you can see they're listening. Look at the other one. He's looking at something. Maybe he can smell something. They've got a very, very, very good sense of smell, the buffalo. They don't have the best eyesight. Their hearing's pretty good. And they'll definitely rely on the smells of nature and the sounds of nature to try and stay alive. Because imagine, imagine, that's what these animals are doing, is they're trying to stay alive. They don't want to be eaten by anything. And it's always very scary when they go silent like that and they stare at you. We always joke and say it looks like they're, that they're coming to collect their money. Maybe, maybe, I did actually borrow some money from a buffalo the other day. Maybe it was this one. <laughs> Probably not. There's lots of buffalo out here. But we're going to keep looking for the lions that are making these buffalo nervous. Let's go to Sydney who's still with the large grey giants. And look at that. This is amazing. The elephant is now showing us the toes. You can see that elephants, they've got toes like we do. And this is something that we always don't realize, that elephants, they do have toes as well. So kids, you must remember that I asked you a question earlier about the mammal in the world. This is the largest land mammal. I didn't get any question from any answer uh, from you all. However, I am going to give you an answer. The animal I was referring to earlier on is the one we are watching now. This is the largest land mammal, which can weigh up to 5,000 kilograms. That is too heavy, isn't it? So when looking at the legs, as well as the trunks, I can see that this body, the whole body is very much dry. So there is no sign that this elephant have been to the waterhole. 
which is giving me a sign that now they might be having uh, some kind of diet heading towards one of the nearest water holes. You can see the whole trunk from the beginning to the end is looking completely dry because this is what they use to collect water. So it means a portion of the trunk, specifically the bottom part, it was supposed to be dark by this time to show that it's wet, they have been to the water hole. We are not very far away from the nearest water hole. Maybe they are planning is to go there. I am going to be here and I'm going to follow them and see if maybe they're going to perform some of the interesting activities during drinking by the water holes. There's quite a number of them here. Not too sure how many are they, but I can see they're just coming one by one from this dry riverbed. Look at that. So these elephants are now enjoying the grasses more than the trees. So it means now some of the trees are too dry for them to eat. Look at that. So you can see that it's very much important kids in order to wash anything that is coming from the ground before we eat. Let's learn from the elephants. Elephants, they are picking up this food from the bottom, right from the floor, but they don't just eat straight away. They are shaking everything so that they can take off all the dirty on these plants before they eat. Look at that. It's quite a very big foot. So now let's see. David has got some zebras. Let's see a very good sighting of zebra in Mara at the moment. Thank you boys and girls for still being there. And you'd imagine sitting is all the way in South Africa and I'm trying to think if you can get a pen and paper and calculate how many miles we are here in East Africa, Kenya. Earlier, I was talking about wildebeest when they do the migration. They migrate together with zebras. We didn't get a chance to get the zebras then, but now if you go to your left again, James, you can see the zebras. Very good. So migration consists of wildebeest and the zebras. The biggest number of the animals that migrate, of course, are the wildebeest, and the numbers keep varying, but of these animals moving, and more than half of them are the wildebeest. Then we've got zebras, like what you can see there, and then we've got some other antelopes that also move with them, called the elands, we don't have any now, and small antelopes called the Thompson gazelles. And when they move, we'll always have what they're looking for. But number one, more often than not, you'll get the zebras in front. Yes, and Castri in front of control says there's so many. I've been counting since the last time I was with you when I was, you were seeing me and I was seeing you. And I had come to a figure of 12,450. And James had a bigger figure of 15,000 plus. We shall still continue counting. And this number, as I said, we are just seeing the small group of the migration that just came in Kenya in the Masai Mara. We are expecting more hundreds of thousands to be coming. And how you see them moving, if you look carefully, that's how they move. That's how they migrate. You see how they move there? And once one starts to move, the rest just follow. And sometimes it's funny because they do zigzag. They might walk forwards then walk backwards and sometimes you think they're not sure where they're going but again as i said earlier they'll only move for two reasons for food or when they'll be giving birth to their young ones if james you can pan in the sky there you can see lots of huge birds flying can you see those birds flying in the air there very good those birds are called vultures and some of them are called stocks and they are all enjoying also they are looking down what this wildebeest could be doing. The one you see there, that's called a marabou stalk. Sometimes they fly, they flap their wings, and because it's a bit hot today, they use the heat thermos to grind, and that way they save their energy 
Thank you, Kasti. Kasti, the final controller enjoys that. And James is doing a fantastic job just following that stock as it flies. And there's so many of them. Look at that. This is all the beauty we got in Africa. And that's both in Kenya and in South Africa. So among the stocks, we also have vultures. So it's a combination of different birds. And as I said earlier, they fly, then stop flapping their wings. They glide, and by so doing, they use what we call heat thermos, and they save their energy. Let's go back to the wildebeest and see if we can hear them going, nyeh, nyeh, nyeh. I am very happy casting final control says you can hear them so loudly and that's the noise they make. I've always wondered what they mean or exactly what they want to say. But as I said earlier, they walk in zigzag, going backwards, going left, going right. Then they are up running if they're spoked by something. And I usually guess they are always saying, okay, let's go north, south, east, west, no, yes. Kids, what do you think they're saying? We've got some homework to do and maybe find out, I mean, just see how many they are, what actually they mean, but it's a kind of communication and once they communicate, they tend to move. But what I've found out, the males tend to be more vocal than the females. Yeah. See, some of them, they look like they have got beards. If you look below their necks, they go like beards hanging under their chins. See that? Well done, James. And I've always made a joke and said, these animals after, you know, all animals were created. We had, you know, these animals do not have a particular name because if you look at them, see the beards there, they look like some of us. You know, when I don't shave, I usually have beards like that. And if you look on their heads there, it looks like a locust. Looking on their horns, looks like a buffalo. And if you look on the neck slightly, you can see some stripes black and white Chucks, that's a very good question and you would want to know why zebras and the wildebeest spend a time together one they have a commonality and we have known during the day the wildebeest will tend to see predators or will tend to see the enemies much better than the zebras and then at night, the zebras, we believe, they see better. And once they see an enemy, what you call predators, for example, a lion or a leopard come in to hunt them, they'll always alert the wildebeest. And that's how we say they complement each other. What sometimes you say, scratch my back, I scratch yours. So the zebras help the wildebeest at night and the wildebeest help the zebras during the day. But you'll notice other animals that are big, like the elephants, will not come to mix with the wildebeest because the elephants don't like that. The elephants are always very gentle, very quiet, as much as they're big. You saw some with uh, Sydney and some with Taylor. They're always very big. But if you look at this wildebeest here, they're small in size, and elephants get irritated by that loud Especially when the elephants have the young ones, they don't like that big noise. It's very difficult to see elephants going together with the wildebeest. They tend to be away. And I think there's an interesting uh, spot, spotted cat somewhere. Yes, I'm still searching for spotted cats, but at this stage, I'm afraid I have found none. It is very, very windy today, so we've come down to a water hole here, not very much water left, and we're hoping maybe some wild dogs we saw earlier today would be over here having a drink or lying under a bush close by. We'll have a little look around to see. While I do that, while I look with my binoculars to see if we can see any wild dogs, for, we had a lovely question, and the question was about why we don't play with wild dogs. Well, we don't play with wild dogs because, uh, not with wild dogs, with Hosanna the leopard. <laughs> we don't play with Hosanna the male leopard 
because he'd eat us. He's not tame at all. He just doesn't mind being around us. So it's not like he's tame. And it's very important that you all understand that, that although we can be close to the animals here, none of them are tame. They don't see us uh, as something to eat when we're sitting in the car, and they don't see us as something to be afraid of when we're sitting in the car. But if we were to get out of the car and walk towards those animals, they react either by running away or coming towards us, neither of which we want. You wouldn't be able to get near Hosanna on foot, I'm afraid, so you, you couldn't play with them even if you wanted to. Remember, he's a wild animal. We're in a wild area. So I'm just looking under a few bushes here to see if I can see the coats of the wild dogs. And I can't see anything, so let's go back to Sydney and his elephant. Very nice to hear that uh, James is going to now look for some painted dogs, the wild dogs. Something I have never seen here in Juma Game Reserve. Still hoping to find them myself. Look at the elephant slowly moving. No noise, nothing. This animal, the disadvantage of their body weight is that they cannot jump. Elephants, they can only run, but they can't jump. Look at that. It's quite a huge animal. You can see when they're climbing, they raise their body high. So the direction they're heading to now is where the dam is. So I'm gonna keep following and following until they get to the dam where I am hoping to see them drinking this afternoon. Look at that. Together with the small ones, all following each other. And this is cool. So this is showing me that the elephants that we just saw now, the big one, is the one who is responsible for this group. By the elephants, the males, they don't have high ranks. Females, they've got high ranks. And they are the ones, there is one of the females responsible to give orders. Orders such as when to wake up, where to go, where to drink. Amazing completely different from how we do things. So these animals, when they've got babies, they can be very much protective. They don't want anything or anybody to come near their babies. So I can see now that they are heading towards that direction. So I've got to reposition myself so that I can give you a better sighting. Are you okay there, Senzo? So I'm just gonna pull and see if we can see these elephants nicely from another angle. So David has got one of those animals that feed on the other animals' remains, the vulture. Let's see. Well, boys and girls, earlier I showed you some birds flying in the air and I called them the, you know, vultures and stocks. Luckily, we have one that just patched there as we were just about to pass this tree. Not sure what exactly she's looking down there. She had a bit of a scratch on her breast. But this is a vulture. We got different types of vultures. This is called the Rupas griffon vulture. And we compare vultures to like the birds that clean our office, that clean the savannah. All these thousands of wildebeest I've been showing you, sometimes if they're messed or if they mess around the savannah, savannah is this area where there are the open grassland. We got these big birds here, like the one you see there, that will always come and clean any dirt, any mess around the area. So back home, I'm sure maybe either every Saturday or every Sunday, you got trucks or people who will come and collect garbage from your homes just to make sure what you have spent and disposed in the trash can is taken care of and is disposed somewhere. Now, these vultures do the same job. So I'll always call them the garbage collectors. I would imagine, you know, sometimes you get 
uh, some lions may be trying to chase the wildebeest. Once they do that, there might be some bones left somewhere. So just to make sure our office or the savannah or the game reserve does not smell badly, these vultures will come to the ground just like the hyenas and eat everything. And then the savannah remains smelling so good. So these vultures here are what we call our garbage collectors. And there's so many different types of them. And look at him there, when she is there, maybe look at her there she's maybe looking to see if there's any trash you know trash meaning anything dirt anything dead on the ground and they're gonna come and pick it up and just make sure everything remains clean and we'll continue enjoying this uh, vulture here but taylor got something bigger than all my will be around here That's exactly what we've got, David, and we've got a teeny tiny little buffalo calf. So we saw the boy buffaloes, the Duggar boys, remember the ones that are covered in mud? We saw two of them. Now we have got a breeding herd of buffalo, but this isn't even a big group. Sometimes you can see three or four, and I've even seen over two, three or four hundred is what I was going to say, and then I've sometimes seen about 2,000 buffalo together. Isn't that crazy? Imagine seeing so many of them. And then, of course, there's elephants in the background. Now, this is a very, very special area that we're in at the moment. It is known as a marsh. So it's got quite a bit of water around. That's why the grass is so nice and green. So you can imagine you see lots and lots of different animals here. And we do. We don't just have the elephants. You saw that there was some, I don't know what those are, maybe some impala. No, those are, those are Thompson's gazelle in between the elephants. They're quite a small gazelle. And then there are, just to the right of that, there are also some topi, some, they're one of the fastest animals. I don't know if you can see a topi, just to the right, Archie. There we go, those are topi. Those are quite cool. They can, like I said, they can run really, really quickly. The lions are going to be super, super fast to try and catch them. So the cheetah, the fastest cats, are really, really really the ones that eat them and then what else more elephants and then i'm hoping i'll show you some zebra in a minute they are also here oh what's that a warthog and a white stork lots of different things sometimes if you're lucky enough to get here early in the morning you can see so many birds because they also like to feed in all this long grass the, the wildlife around this area is pretty amazing and that's why I thought I'd come here this afternoon to share it with all of you that are watching so that you can see that's very sweet though and that little buffalo is very very tired exhausted so that's had to sit down that's very new that's maybe only a few weeks old but everybody's keeping a close eye on it and I couldn't see any more baby buffalo one or two but they're a little bit older than that one you could and it was also a different color look how dark these buffalo are see how they're almost black and when the young buffaloes are born they're more of a brownish color and that will help camouflage them so that'll help hide them in the long grass I often find sometimes the younger animals have got more spots on them or they're a different color to mom and dad just while they're little to try and hide away a little bit easier but this is very nice. There, the zebra that I was telling you, also out eating some grass. And soon, maybe by next week or in the week after, this area will be filled with zebra and lots of wildebeest too, which you've already seen with David. Lovely. Okay, but we're going to move on. We're still looking for our lions. Or if you go to James, who's got some warthogs. Yes, we've got some piggies, some little warthogs. It looks like a sounder of warthogs. That's what we call a group of warthogs. And it's probably two sows, two females. Yes, it is. And they're babies. And those babies will be almost ready to leave home now. It looks to me like two of them are from one litter and the smallest one, which is closest to us, is from another litter. So one of them belongs to one mother and two of them belong to the other mother. 
And that's how they live in warthog families or sanders. One or two females and their babies. And now they've disappeared. We've also got over there a special kind of a bird. And that's called an Egyptian goose. And you can see what's so special about them is not that they can stand on one foot. As you can see, they are standing on one foot. Most birds can stand on one foot. It's that they are always shouting at each other. You saw they were moving and the one at the back there is having a long conversation with the one in the front. Wah, 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 it says. And the one in the front doesn't really pay any attention, standing on one foot there. Now birds often stand on one foot for the reason that the foot is exposed. In other words, there are no feathers on the foot and that means that it can get a bit cold if the wind's blowing. And so they tuck the one feather up into the tummy to keep it warm. It's not very cold today, so I'm not really sure why that Egyptian goose is standing on one foot. Then we've got some other birds there. You can see a grey bird, boring looking bird, but it's got a lovely voice. It sounds like this. It goes, And that's why it's called a go-away bird. Because it says, go away, go away. But it's not saying it to you because it quite likes you. Then those two other little ones there are called three-banded plovers. Three-banded plovers. And you don't really need to remember that, but you do need to remember what they eat. They eat little snails. And I bet you didn't know that you get lots of little snails on the shore of these little water holes that we have over here. So that's what we've got going on over here. And then I'll, I have seen something else, but I wonder if we're actually going to be able to show it to you. I'm going to try. I'm going to move slightly forward, and it's actually very far away, but I'm going to show you a reptile. All right, now Craig, on the damn wall there, there is a water monitor lizard on the left hand side. So if you zoom right into there, I'll direct you from there, all the way in, sort of at the top, up a bit. And now just pan left slowly. Oh no, there he is, you've got him. Middle of your frame. Well done. <laughs> you see him? There are actually two of them. So if you go to the left, you can see the one in the middle of the frame there, and you just keep going a little bit left. Yeah, well, that should do it. If you zoom in, is that as far in as we can go? There's the other one there. That's it. They're quite far away. I tell you what, let's try and get a bit closer, because that's just a bit silly to be so far away from these lizards. They're not going to run away if we get a little bit closer. And they're really enjoying sitting in the sun. Now, our winter is just about finished here in the southern parts of Africa and so the reptiles, the snakes and the lizards, the geckos will start to come out a bit more now. They don't like the cold, you see the reptiles. Try not to fall off the stand wall. You see them now? If you zoom, zoom all the way in there and go a little bit to the right. Keep going right, pan right, pan right, and there. You see the water monitor lizard? Now that lizard is about two and a half feet long. In fact, it's about two feet long. I think that's a young one. And they gave birth, or they were born here. Not very long ago. No, those are the adults. It's definitely the adults. It's just not a very big adult, that one. They love sitting in the sun. So that is a very special water monitor lizard. Isn't that nice? I think it's quite special to see a little bird like that. A bird, a little reptile like that. Not a very little reptile at all, actually. A very big one. There's only one reptile that's bigger than that that we get here, and that, of course, is the crocodile. 
I suppose some of our snakes are a bit bigger too, the pythons and the mumbas. Right, old Sidders is still with his elephant. Let's go and find out if it's heading towards some water. The elephants, they are slowly moving towards the water hole. Now they are not that very much far away. I saw just now the little one was trying to get hold of some milk. She was milking from the mother. Mother was not very much interested to give the little one some milk at the moment. Maybe it's because the mother is thirsty. So I can see they are all now coming out. They are not very far away. I have also picked up some birds making some noises around the water hole. So maybe there is some of the other animals they are going to drink now. This area where these elephants are at this stage is the only area I have seen. Ian, the elephants can be able to drink 150 to 200 liters of water a day. That is quite a lot of water. You can see that in order to sustain the elephants, you need quite a lot of water available. And apart from drinking, elephants are very much clean. They prefer to go and swim as well in order to clean the parasite, just to clean themselves. So you can see now they are on a convoy. They are now slowly going out of the bushes, moving towards the water wall, where I am hoping to have a very good sighting very shortly. So I'm just gonna now pull forward and try to follow them so that we can see them nicely in a very short space. It is not a very big family. I can see that it's, uh, it's nice and a very small family, not a lot. But let's now try and follow them and see what we are going to find when they get to the water hole. I can see that they are, they've got too many thoughts. They are just now standing on the road, but I can see that the leader of the group is facing towards the direction of the water hole. So the thing is, they are not going straight to the water hole. They are spending much time because here, there is still quite a lot of green available trees. So you can see now, they are all feeding there, trying to have something from uh, one of the acacia trees there and they are also avoiding the sun at the same time because they are standing just by this side of the tree where there is some nice shade so they are avoiding the other side of the trees whereby it's very hot at the moment elephants they always look very much dirty you can see looking at that one because they always pick up some sand and throw the sand right over the bodies so that they can cool the body temperature maybe one of them is gonna do that before we leave them this afternoon you can see they've got a very thick skin but they do have some of the small hairs there and the tail also got some hairs. So these hairs helps them in order to chase away things such as the flies. Decision has been taken now. You can see they are moving again, going towards the direction I am looking for. So now I am just going to follow them because they are not very far away, they are slowly approaching the water hole at the moment. So it's good that now they are done feeding because they are now just walking on the road which is nice and clear. So I don't think there will be any delays anymore now. They are going right straight to the water hole. So these animals, they've got very good sense of smell. They can smell water from very far. You 
it's very, very, very much windy at the moment here where I am. So we are not very far away from the dam now. So, sense of which side must I park? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to approach the dam now. Both myself and the elephants, we are approaching the dam at this stage. They look very much thirsty now. I can see how they are walking. They can't wait. You can see they are even in increasing the speed now when coming to the water hole. Look at that. So they can't wait. It is very much windy at the moment here where I am. So the elephants have just arrived at the water hole now. They are trying to uh, drink. Look at that. So they prefer to drink uh, in the morning and now by the late afternoon. Oh, one of them was far behind. I can see very far. One of them trying to approach to come and join these ones. So the elephants like this, when done feeding and, and drinking mostly, you will see them going deep into the water hole and push each other and play. They can even play for hours and hours. This is very much interesting. That is how they communicate. They trumpet sometimes. They also communicate silently. You will hear some kind of a vibration uh, from the ground as well when they are communicating. So they trumpet when they are angry. They also trumpet when they are happy. So you can see that that one was looking for a space was trying to push this one so that uh, she can go away and they can just have some drink alone. Standing on three, three legs. They were all very much thirsty. They were all very much thirsty. So now you can see that the trunk, it does touch the water which is very easy for me to see if they have been to the water hole because if the trunk is not yet dry then I can see that no these elephants they have not yet got water look at that the trunk is getting wet so that trunk can be able to collect up to 80 liters 8 liters at a time They are very much peaceful, not complaining about my presence. All they are doing is just having water here. When the elephants are feeding and when they're drinking, they've got a very big body size. So when they're drinking, when, when they're picking up the water and take it up to the body, they've got to raise up their head as well a little bit so that the water can go in. It seems like uh, these two of them, they've got attention. I can see now they are chasing one of them and this one was late to come. You can see now they are done eating some of them. So I'm just gonna I pull around and so that you can see what is happening here. Oh, look, that one, <laughs> that one fell. So that one fell when uh, she was trying to follow the others. So I can see that now. 
So you can see now they have decided to go that side. One of them have not yet started drinking. But these other ones who have been to the water hole are trying to chase that one away. I just don't know why are they doing this. Because they are pushing that one away. The one that is coming now. This one have not yet done with drinking. Have not even yet started. I just want to see what is going to happen when this one meets the one going out. Look at that. So now let's see, uh, James has got some hippopotamus. He would like to share with us something interesting on the other side. We've got some hippo in a very strong wind here. And it's funny how the wind tends to blow much harder when you're over water. In fact, that's a really horrible wind that we're sitting in anyway. It doesn't matter, it's pretty normal for August. We're sitting here at a water hole with lots of hippopotamus. There's one hippopotamus's back. And there are a few dotted about all over this big dam here. There we are. There's another one. I don't think they like the wind very much either, so they're sort of sticking their heads under the water. There's a hippo head. Looks like two big ones there. there are quite a few little ones here, but you can see they're putting their heads under the water. They don't really like it at all. The wind, I mean, not the water. Then we've got something I mentioned a little bit earlier at the far end of the waterhole. We've got two of the biggest reptiles that we get. They are crocodiles. Look at them. Those crocodiles are probably about three and a half meters long each. That's very big indeed. That's probably about ooh, almost 16 feet long. So that's huge. And one of them actually caught an impala swimming across the water here about four days ago. Managed to catch a young male impala that was swimming through the water. It had got itself stranded on an island in this dam and the crocodile did not let it go unfortunately. Anyway, that's a bit of a sad story, but it's what happens out here, even those crocodiles have to eat. Let's see if we've got any other special animals here. We've got, at the very far end, we've got some Nyala having a drink and grazing. Oh, and a waterbuck, a very big waterbuck. You can see there's a lot of water in here, which is great because we're going to the very, very dry part of the season now. And hopefully, hopefully we'll get some rain in the next few months. So that's very nice. So this is going to be a good place to come and see animals over the next month or so when it gets very, very dry. Alrighty, we can just go to the end of the dam and see if we can get another picture as we go. We're nearly finished with our kids' drive, and so you must remember to join us, all of you, the many that are watching. We must, you must remember to join us next week at the same time. Let's see if we can't get slightly closer to those very large reptiles. There they are. Huge crocodiles. And some of them, you know, weigh... How much do they weigh? Some of them could weigh about 800 kilograms or so. That's a really big one. And if you multiply that by 2.2, you get to roughly 2,000 pounds. So they are huge. Okay, kids. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. We're going to enjoy the rest of our Saturday too. We still have another two hours of safari out here, which is very exciting. 
Like I say, please join us next week at the same time for a Nat Geo Kids Drive. Until then, I hope that you have a very wonderful day and a highly enjoyable rest of the week. Bye-bye.